So we're going to be working with the fourth edition of the Physical Geography book, um, printed by the Oxford University Press. So let's get started on our PowerPoint. So let's start with Unit 1 through 11, Introducing Physical Geography. And this is an image of Earth from space showing interactions of land, water, and the atmosphere. And the objective is to introduce and discuss the contemporary focus of physical geography, relate physical geography to the other natural and physical sciences, explain the scientific method as a way of investigating the natural world, and introduce the systems and modeling approaches of physical geography. And the field of geography includes the science of geography, the scope of geography, the Earth system science, the feedback mechanisms, location and time on Earth, maps, scales and projections, and other models, tools of geography, and remote sensing and GIS and GPS. So here is um, a diagram of the subfields of physical geography. As you see, um, you have uh, geomorphology, climatology, plant geography, biogeography, zoo geography, soil geography, marine geography, and water resources. And then you have the wider names of geology, meteorology, botany, ecology, zoology, pedology, marine science, and hydrology. And then we have the Earth System Science, which is open systems, closed systems, which um, an example of a closed system would be the carbon cycle. And then you have feedbacks, both positive and ne negative. And then you have the water cycle image there and um, a photosynthesis image there. And then feedback, so positive and negative, and it has images of an Arctic ice albedo feedback video and um, the Iceland eruption. And um, you can go to those videos if you'd like. And then we have dynamic equilibrium, which is South Florida's Atlantic coast, looking northward past Miami Beach. At present, the beach shows a system in dynamic equilibrium with currents flowing parallel to the coast continually removing sand while at the same time depositing new sand. And then we have, oops, we have orders of geog geographic magnitudes and really the scope, um, the zone of geographer's interest is basically what it shows. Good. Um, orders of magnitude. And then they just have an example of a central park. And that's it. And here we have Unit 2, the planet Earth. And the objectives are present the basics of Earth's shape and size, define and highlight the five spheres of the Earth's system, explore the Earth's hemispheres, highlight the general, char general characteristics of Earth's land masses, introduce the world's ocean basins and the topographic characteristics of the seafloor. So we have Earth's geometry and size, which it says, due to rotation, the Earth is more elliptical than spherical. And it shows the equator and the equatorial bulge. Um, the North and South Poles, the Polar Circumference, and the Equatorial Circumference. And then this is an exaggerated way to show um, mountainous terrain, and the smooth Earth more realistically drawn because it's really not that um, exaggerated. And then the Earth interacting spheres of atmosphere, lithosphere, Biosphere, hydrosphere, cryosphere, and anthrosphere. Anthrosphere being um, human, cryosphere being ice and water, um, and the like. Hydrosphere, the biosphere, the lithosphere, and the atmosphere. And there's a video which you can go to that link and just shows the different um, spheres interacting. And then distribution of land and sea, land being 70, over 70%. In the land hemisphere, this half of the globe contains most of the Earth's land masses. Land masses, ah, I can't believe I just said that. Land masses, which surrounds Africa. And then the distribution of um, people. And then the world ocean floor reveals features below the ocean waters. And you have um, abyssal plains, continental shelf, continental slope, mid oceanic ridge, continental rise, and the different features. Then features of the continental margins, you have the continental shelf, which goes into the continental slope, which then goes into the continental rise, and the ocean floor, which is also called the abyssal ridge, and then you have a canyon in there, and another source, and that's it. 
And here we have Unit 3 mapping their surface, and we have an image of the Royal Observatory at Gr um, Greenwich near London, and it marks the prime meridian, where east meets west. And the objectives is introduce reference systems used for locations on the Earth's surface, describe the most important characteristics of maps and the features of common classes of map projections, interpret isoline maps, discuss contemporary developments in geographic information science. You have locations on Earth, latitude parallels, longitude meridians, the prime meridians, and the great circles of being the meridians, and the small circles of being the um, parallels, and the only one that's not a small circle that's a parallel is the equator, and that's considered a great circle. And then we have latitude and longitude. And then we have global positioning systems, the GPS. It provides location, latitude, and long longitude, and elevation using orbiting satellites based on a corrected geoid, the reference ellipsoid of the Earth. The correction is made due to gravity variations as shown on the maps. And you need at least three, though typically um, four, satellites to make a proper um, location. And here we have a picture of an remote area. The GPS provides accurate location of the elevation from three satellites, as I was saying. But um, cheaper ones usually require four, like your phone or something like that. And then we have map projections, and we have cylindrical, mercator, um, mercator conic, planar, and equal area. And, yeah. and the mercator projection is distortion grace near the poles. Provides true and constant compass bearing room lines, room lines, I mean. And the planar nomic projection, meridians converge at poles and straight lines follow great circles. Equal air projection preserves relative sizes of continents. Interrupted form not continuous, thus minimizes distortion. And the Robinson map projection, it's a compromise between area and shape distortion. Shows the whole globe stretches poles into lines. And then is a rhythmic isoline map shows contours of equal values like rainfall and like topographic height charts reduces 3D volumetric data onto 2D map. And then topographic contour maps showing horizontal map of isolines and vertical cross section of traverse line XY. And a perspective sketch of coastal landscape and corresponding topographic map. And uh, GIS, Geographic Information System, is computer-generated overlays, and a query of capabilities can ask questions of data. Um, it's interactive. Remote sensing is satellite-based, aircraft-based, and ground-based, radar and frared. Land, um, this is an image. Black representing water, and um, red vegetation, and urban areas are blue and gray. And remote sensing the environment, active systems versus passive systems, with electromagnetic spectrum of wavelengths of energy. Earth orbiting satellites gather data used in weather, climate, atmospheric pollution, geology, hydrology, soil science, and agricultural biology and oceanography. And that's the end of it. Okay, side note, we'll probably end on Unit 5 and then do a Part 2. So let's continue on to Unit 4, Sun-Earth Relationships. And this includes revolution, rotation, declination, or the tilt of Earth's axis, axis, seasons, time zones, insulation, and variation. And this is an image of sunrise over the Earth. Objectives, examine the Earth's motions relative to the sun. Demonstrate the consequences of the Earth's axle, axis tilt for the annual march of the seasons. And introduce the time and spatial variations and solar radiation received at surface locations. And here we go, revolution of the Earth around the sun. Um... Perhelion is closest to the sun at January 3rd. Um, aphelion is farthest from the sun July 4th, which is opposite of what we would think. And distance differences from sun do not influence the amount of solar energy received significantly. And then Earth revolves around the sun in an elliptical path. Earth and sun are not drawn to scale, and the orbit's elongation is highly exaggerated for clarity. It's actually quite smaller. And counterclockwise movements, revolution is annual cycle, rotation is a daily cycle. So 20, um, 
what is it? Uh, 365.25 days is um, one cycle or revolution, and then the rotation is about 24 hours, and that gives us our days. And then declination of the Earth's axis is a constant tilt of 23.5 degrees, which provides seasons. And there's a little video about misconceptions about the cause of the seasons. And then midnight sun within the Arctic and Antarctic circle. The sun does not set at summer solstice, as you can see. And then solar altitude, sun's height above the horizon. The vertical 90 degree sun is at the equator on equinoxes. Vertical sun is at the top, tropic of Cancer on summer solstice. And the vertical sun is at the tropic of Cancer on winter solstice. So Cancer summer, Capricorn winter. And here's an image for the seasons with relation to the sun. And then world time zones. Um, <coughs> boundaries are not straight lines because of um, changes for uh, logical changes for different areas. And then the international date line provides um, 24 hour change, so day change. And then prime meridian is uh, zero degrees, basically. And the times are set around it. And then daylight hours by dates and times image. And then intensity of sun, reception of solar radiation at different latitudes, showing direct and direct uh, rays, so most direct at the middle, with less direct at the top and bottom. And relationship between solar noon altitude and daylight hours. And then values of seasonal differences of time and space. Sorry. Um... Here we show um, latitude with a weaker seasonal cycle, a weaker latitude gradient. And then spatial distribution of insulation at top of the atmosphere as percentage of global average. And that's the end. Okay, and unit 5 is radiation the heat balance of the planet. The objectives are understand the processes by which heat flows within the Earth's system, follow the cascade of solar energy to the Earth's surface and the resulting energy exchanges between surface and atmosphere, link the greenhouse effect to the Earth's habitability, I can never say that word, habitability, understand latitudinal differences in net radiation, and explore global energetics. And this is an image of solar and terrestrial radiation, short being solar, long being terrestrial. As you can see... And then heat conduction between the Earth's surface and subsurface daily and seasonal pal um, patterns. Daily being um, the warmer surface to the cooler underneath. And then night colder being heated by the warm underneath. And the same for summer or winter. And then latent and sensible heat transfer with conduction, convection, and radiation. And the radiation balance, solar radiation flow in the atmosphere. That image. 19% um, absorbed. 5% uh, scattered or reflected. 32% direct. 7% reflected. 22% diffuse. And 18% reflected by clouds. And then global energy, energy flow image. And then global distribution of heat flow. Tropics receive more energy than the poles. Heat must be transferred from tropics to polar regions. Greenhouse with and without ventilation. This image. Um, letting in just a bit of air can change the temperature. The greenhouse effect of the atmosphere. Image. And that is the end of Unit 5. And this will be the end of Part 1.